Hi, welcome to ACS Composite. My name is Joseph, and we're back starting with new products for the C8 Corvette. If you're here watching us, you're probably one of our customers or followers, or you just purchased a brand new C8 and you're doing your homework on what you could do. Over the last two years, we've come out with a full product line for the C8 Corvette, like splitters, rockers, our infamous 1VM, 5VM, and 7VM line. And finally, we're completing the rear end treatment of a C8 Stingray. We've introduced our Z51 wickers for a Z51 spoiler. You could obviously add the Z51 spoiler if you have a non-spoilered car. We have our low profile and high wing. And of course, my favorite, a Speedtail spoiler. So all these items were offered to give a different personality to your C8, to go from mild to wild. And finally, we're introducing our diffuser system. So let's take a look at the stock car to begin. And we have the stock diffuser which basically covers the whole bottom portion of the car. We have the exhaust system on the side, which left us this portion to design something. And the last few years, we've offered C7 diffuser fins for obviously the C7 Stingray and Z06s. So we wanted to do something different for the C8. This was a new canvas and new challenges. This is a rear engine car, so the layout is very different. The whole rear end of the car is very packed and tight. So we know that a lot of us are doing exhaust systems, so the clearance and the space was critical. Temperatures are also a whole new ball game on this car. So we didn't want to alter or do any damage to it. Hence why we came out with a new system, which is a C8 diffuser insert. So this is actually a add-on piece to this system here without any drilling to the painted parts. It's actually pretty impressive. So with all this in mind, our parameters, our temperatures, our space issues, we designed a system that I'm very proud of. Let's go over to our orange car and see what we came up with. And this is our upgraded diffuser system for the C8 Stingray. Notice it's an add-on insert to the original panel. So there's no bumper removal, there's no modifications to the car, and we're not losing the standard diffuser. So one of the biggest issues we always have playing with diffuser systems is the crashability. So that's a safety aspect. This is a part designed by GM. We have to keep all the mechanicals of it, meaning we cannot make this out of carbon, we cannot make this more rigid or less flexible since doing that would change the integrity of the rear end, it'll change the way the sensors work and the way the car would crash. So we always try to minimize the modifications we do to the car, yet we still want to get the appearance and the performance that a diffuser would offer. In this particular setup, we see the exhaust system is very tight. Everything is tucked in the back, the transmission's there, the exhaust system, and there's not much room. So ideally, we would have wanted to cut all this out and try to increase that tunnel that creates a diffuser. But in this scenario, it wasn't possible. So the next solution was to move outwards, which gives us more aggressivity, but also lets us create that tunnel. And what we've done is use this design element of the original diffuser and stretched it out to create our new tunnel with our fins integrated into it. This particular car obviously had a color matched two-tone setup, which really highlights it. We will be offering these in different colors and of course, carbon flash black if you wanna go for a stealth look. Let's go take a look at the part. I'll obviously walk you through the installation. I'll install a set of carbon flash diffuser inserts on the black car and we'll be able to compare the two before and after. So the setup is very simple. We obviously have the inserts, mounting bracket, hardware, and instructions. And the insert itself is manufactured in our PC composite. The reason for the material selection is really heat resistant in this particular case. The exhaust system is generating a lot of heat and obviously a lot of the aftermarket ones from what we've seen are generating even more heat. So heat resistant was the most important thing. Secondary obviously is the fit and finish. Since this is an overlay part, the fit around the diffuser in this area here and here were critical and PC was actually perfect for that. So we're very pleased with the final setup. It does have hardware, so there's a stud here. This one goes through the mesh and we have our infamous bracket. This is our bracket, it's actually marked. This one is our passenger side lower bracket. This goes behind the diffuser. It's mounted using the same screws holding the mesh so those two seven millimeter screws get removed. 
The great thing about the setup is that it is reversible. So if you install this on your car and you sell the car in three years or the new customer doesn't like it, you could remove it and there's no permanent holes on the car itself. So the only holes are at the bottom, which is an unpainted, invisible part. So it's really clever that way, giving us that diffuser look, the performance it offers, and obviously completing the rear end look of the car. All my parts are laid out. We're gonna kick off the installation. There are some preps and tips that I could share. The panels themselves are all marked. So when we look inside, we have our part number and this is our passenger side. So passenger side here and obviously our driver's side here. The mounting bracket is probably something that I know some of us will get confused as a first time installer, but right at the bottom, there's a small DRV for driver's side. So that's on this side and obviously passenger. So I always say split the two or keep them in a foam insert. We have the bracket prep. So this is our mounting bracket, like we said. This profile here basically is the vertical portion and the writing is parallel to the ground. We have some new nuts to install. So these are threaded fasteners. We always like to mechanically fasten everything to the car. We don't like self tappers or things of the sort. They usually vibrate out. This is an automotive grade. It's actually a GM part used throughout the whole rear end. This is an item we could trust. And the way it gets installed, we have a recess on each end and where the recess is where the flat portion of the unit is. You don't want to put it upside down because obviously when you'll be all set up on the car, it'll be very frustrating to dismantle all that. Pretty simple, I put it on and slide it on and center it. And this is two per bracket. And again, I want to make sure I'm flat on the bottom portion. That's the one thing I would hate to get wrong once I'm on the car ready to bolt everything up. I'll do the other side while I'm here. Again, flat portion to the bottom. Snap on my U-nut. And then what I've left with are T15 screws, which obviously two will go from the bottom of the diffuser into the mounting bracket. And the same thing here, which will require two holes to be drilled to the underpan. This is the upper point going through the mesh. So this is probably the hardest part of the installation. I'll be going through a hole to fasten it. Obviously my car will be cooled down, so no exhaust heat, otherwise you burn your hand. You could technically do this on the ground, meaning there's no jacking required if you have a proper drill. I'll be raising the car four or five inches just to help a little bit the cameraman. I'm all set up to do the install. I've brought over one side. I'm starting with the passenger side. I have my diffuser insert, my bracket. Tool-wise, pretty simple. I have a seven millimeter flexible ratchet, which I think is a must. I have my 316 drill bit and my hardware, which uh, we just did a walkthrough. Obviously the insert gets installed here. Step one is really to clean it. You don't wanna retain any dust underneath. If you have a protective film on the diffuser, I would leave it. It's actually a good thing. I'm gonna do a dry fit now of the part on the car, only to familiarize myself with the panel. So the panel is pretty straightforward. I'm holding the passenger side and when I install it, that is perfect. The stud went through the mesh and that's what I want because that ensures it's tucked in as much as possible, giving me a close gap here and here. And if we look at the bottom, there's the underpan interaction. So the next step is our mounting bracket. So now that I know what's going on, I'll take it out and take a look at my mounting bracket. This is obviously the passenger side bracket. It gets installed right here. And these two mounting points are common with the mesh mounting points. So there's two seven millimeter screws located right here. Exhaust system is cold, meaning the car's been parked for quite some time. I definitely don't want to get burnt on a hot running car. <laughs> my first one's here. See my finger? And there's a seven millimeter fastener. I put my ratchet and basically take it out. These are also mounted on U-nuts, so they're pretty hard and hard to do by hand. So I'm actually going to go all the way with the ratchet till it's off. And here's our seven. I'm keeping this since it, the same screw is used to hold the bracket. My second one, I follow, I feel it, is right here. I have my second fastener. The bracket is positioned on the inside of the diffuser. 
like this. And these are the two mounting points being held by the seven. And what it's doing is creating a sandwich between the diffuser. So we have the bracket, the diffuser, and the insert. Gets all bolted up together, creating a sandwich, which gives it its rigidity without drilling in this area. So that's really a, a key component. We don't see much on the backside, but once I know the positioning and the matching shape, it's pretty simple. I go inside, position it, and it actually ends where this feature is. I can now go back, feel the hole, and put the hole in, and put the screw in. Before I over tighten, I'm gonna go do the second one. Again, I feel the hole, and now I can put the seven screw, seven millimeter screw back in it. Start of the threads, go back with my flexible wrench on clockwise, and we'll be done. Go back to number two, and then I'll final tighten both. So we see the bracket is flush with the diffuser panel itself. Our U-nuts are flush, which was the big point I was making earlier, making sure that they're not inverted since you won't be able to get the diffuser on. I have my diffuser, I'll be reinstalling it, keeping my T15 screws handy with my screwdriver. There we go, it's on. Our final step are the last two mounting points towards the front of the diffuser insert. I'm only drilling through one eighth of an inch panel, so obviously you don't need to go full in. Putting a unit on the back side and my T15 screw. My second hole, I'm using a half inch key so that my U-nut does not spin. And I'm tightening both. And the reason we're using a U-nut and a screw is obviously to match all the OEM fasteners, but if ever you need to service the back of the car, install a spoiler or whatever repair you need to do, the rear bumper is still removable all you'll have to do is take out those two mounting points there and the whole rear clip could come off with the new insert on it. And this completes the installation of this side. I'll now do the driver's side, which is exactly the same, and we'll take a look overall what it looks like. To summarize, we have the preparation of the brackets where we install the units onto the mounting brackets. We then move on to the car. We remove two seven millimeter screws holding the mesh to the diffuser panel, and we position the mounting bracket that's been prepped. Reinstall the seven millimeter screws. And now we move on to the installation of the insert panel itself. Once these are properly positioned with the stud going through the mesh, we install two T15 screws from the bottom. We don't tighten these yet, just to make sure that we have the position we want. Once this is done, we tighten it and install the mounting nut on the inside of the mesh. Finally, we're drilling the last two holes and install the last two T15 screws at the bottom portion of the mounting panel. So we've completed the installation of our C8 diffuser inserts. We put both driver and passenger sides on our black car. One thing to highlight, even though it's a black car, the diffuser on all C8 Stingrays are painted carbon flash black. So on this car, we did flash on flash. The insert is matching the OEM panel. So it gives you more of a stealth look compared to the color match. So if we go back to the orange car, we get to see more details and appreciate more the design efforts that were brought into the panel. So obviously we got the orange orange with the flash in the middle, and now we really get to see how it stands out, how it's been pulled rearward with the triple fins at the bottom and the grill mesh standing out. So it's really two different looks for two different personalities. Let us know in the comments what you prefer or if you plan on doing different layouts. I know some customers have been talking to us about 
just color matching the fins, which are molded into the panel. So there's tons of possibilities that come into effect. ACS is offering a carbon flash insert and a select few colors that we've matched the color on. And of course, you could always take it to the next level and get it painted yourself to match anything else. We'd love to hear from you guys. So you could always reach out to us either by phone, chat, and obviously the comments below. We'd love to know which one you like more or what are your intents are for color matching. And of course, if you have any ideas for products, we'd love to hear from you. So reach out to us. Be sure to subscribe. There's tons of new parts coming out this spring. So we're not done with the C8 yet.